Hello everybody, this is Eric Waring. Welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I am here, I walk into the hotel uh, here in Anaheim, California, and who do I see? My old friend, superstar, amazing personal development guru, one of the best speakers in the world, Mr. Les Brown. Yes. And I thank, thank you. And he said, old friend, after I took all the time to use <laughs> mascara to cover my gray hair. I can't believe this guy. <laughs> Great to see you. It's great to see you. Um, we commandeered the little lounge up on the 14th floor, and yes. we set this up. And uh, I, I asked Les if he'd be willing to share with the Network Marketing Pro audience some of the great wisdom that he has. And he and he's been really an ambassador for network marketing for a long time. Even though you know you're you, you're really a professional speaker, coach, trainer, um, you teach people how to speak, how to communicate, all those different things. Um, so he has a lot of value that he can bring. So, Les, everybody that watches this program, they want to become professionals. They want to develop the skills necessary in order to be able to succeed. And, and over the years, what are the common attributes that you see of people who are the superstars, that, that are the professionals, that are the rock stars? The common theme that I've seen that those individuals that can tell their story and create value for the audience and as a result of people being in the experience of that setting, they leave there feeling better about themselves, believing in themselves, believing in their product, believing in the industry and believing in the possibility that they can grow their business and, and, when and you, that's crucial. And when you say story, um, it's not just in front of an audience, it might be just to another person. One -on -one, small groups on the telephone because your product, there's a story behind it. Why you became involved in the business, there's a story behind it. You look at the Dexter Yeager, the Sharon Sharifs, all of them had a story that they told that other people bought into. When you are presenting to any type of person, one individual, small group or large group, three questions going on in their head. Who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? Hmm. And so, if you don't answer those three questions, people will listen, they'll be polite, and then they'll walk away. The other underlying... So say those three again. Yeah, who are you, what do you have, right. and why should I care? So you have to strategically tell your story to create an experience for the person. And it's very important, experience Eric, because a lot of people, a lot of people who become involved in, in, in network marketing, they spend a lot of time giving out a lot of information. Facts. Yeah, facts, no. People... When they are listening to you, two questions going on in their head. Can I do it? And is it worth it? Mm. Okay? So you have to create an experience where that person will say, I can do this, and it's worth my doing this. So it's an interesting, I, I love words, I love mm. kind of figuring that out, and, and you, on purpose, said the word experience. Yes. Why is it, because I've never because, heard somebody say it that because way. Because if information can change people, everybody will be skinny, rich, and happy. <laughs> so right. It's not about the information. The order to, to, you're talking to a person who's a 9 to 5 person, mm -hmm. and you want them to transform their lives. You want them to go from 9 to 5 to working from 5 until they faint. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so that's a whole different kind of person. They must be willing to die to who they are now to give birth to who they must become in order to be successful in wow. this business. Wow. So you've got to create an experience for them where they now they feel motivated. There's no saying you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make a drink. Mm -hmm. However, if you strategically tell your story and create an experience for that person, you can create a thirst where they want to drink, mm -hmm. where they want to be a part of this, where they share the vision, where they say, you know what, sign me up. I want to be a part of this because you're creating a community of achievers. And, and in, in order to create that community of achievers, to increase your recruitment, and to be able to retain your people that you bring into the business so it's not a swinging door, you've got to be able to tell that story again and again and again. Each time it's got to be fresh. Each time when people leave your presence, they must leave there feeling better about themselves, but talking about you and the role that you're playing in their lives and how you're transforming them. So the story creates the experience? Yes, and how you strategically tell the story. Just keep in mind, the most powerful position in the world, Presidency of the United States, ball down to two stories, an honorable man, Vietnam veteran, five-year prisoner of war, John McCain, mm -hmm. um, the Southside community activist, raised in a single-family household, President Barack Obama. How they told their stories, the influence and the impact determined 
how much money came in, mm -hmm. how many votes that were cast. So mm -hmm. people, are, as, as an entrepreneur, we've got to be able to tell our story strategically, not just telling a story because everybody's got a story. Mm -hmm. But you've got to tell that story in a way that people see themselves in the story. I'm known for you got to be hungry. Well, and, th and let's talk about that, you know yes. what I mean? Because I, I've known Les for a lot of years, and, mm -hmm. and, and I've seen you speak, and we've been part of events together. And one of the stories that has been a centerpiece of your life is that you got to be hungry. And I do believe that network marketing professionals need to be hungry. And some yes. of them don't have the hunger that they need to have. And through telling that story, and, and I, I've seen you tell that story mm -hmm. a hundred times, times yes. probably. Yes. And you know what? Every time it still gets me because, because you've been a professional at how you've done it. And I make the story the audience's story. When I tell the story about going back to the radio station. Well, let, yeah, let's yes. just tell it. Do you mind? Well, yeah, I'm going to tell it and, and coach them on how, how uh, to tell good, the story. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well, maybe, yes. maybe if we tell the story and then we can come back and say, okay, because a lot of people out here are thinking, Ooh, he's, got, he's got a story. Yeah. He's got a story. I don't like that. I know. Oh, I know. Well, yeah. he, he has a, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of people are thinking, yeah, yes. Les has a story, but I don't have a story. Yeah. My life is boring. My life is not interesting. My right, life is not special. It's not dramatic. Have you ever heard of Mary Ann Williamson? Yeah. Mary, what's her story? She doesn't have a story. Mary Ann Williamson wrote a book about a book. Hmm. She wrote a book called Return to Love. Return to Love was about a book called A Course in Miracles. Yeah. Okay? So you don't have to have a story. You can tell somebody else's story. For instance, I, I met a young man, and, and, and he decided to become involved in multi-level marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think about your goals and think about your dreams. And let me share something with you. How many of you know there's no such thing as job security? Well, keep in mind, this young man became in multi-level marketing, and I asked him, what's your story? He said he went to apply for a job. They told him if he would double the production, he could become the top manager at this company and would have job security, and, and, and he would be able to get a bonus. Not only did he double the production, he quadrupled the production. Guess what they did? As a result of the explosion in the business that they were able to acquire, they had to move to another facility, and they fired him. They said because of the new facility, they had to pay more money for the lease on the facility, and they couldn't afford his services anymore. Now, here's what the truth is. They had figured out how to do what he came in there and did. They no longer needed him. So the reason he's become, became a part of multi-level marketing is he knows that the 40-40 plan is gone, where you can work 40 hours a week for 40 years and retire. There's no such thing as job security. Today, you have to have something that you can call your own. And so in multi-level marketing, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. You have an opportunity. You have a shot. Everybody won't get rich, but you've got a shot to control your own financial future. And that story by that young man is a story that's being lived every day. Now see, in two minutes, yes. you told somebody else's story yes. to this audience yes, because and gave the them best, a perfect example. Right, because the best speakers make the fewest words go the farthest. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to tell a story all day. And so I tell people, how many of you know, as you look at yourselves, how many of you know there's no such thing as job security? And I will raise my hand. The reason I'm doing that is that I want them to now make this man's story their story. Mm. So they'll raise their hands. You're right. Good. Here's what happened to them. What they're saying to themselves, either that has happened to me or I know someone that has happened Especially to me. Especially in today's economy. Right. Now I'm transitioning from there to here's why he became a part of this. Mm. He wanted to create security for himself. And I'm saying everybody's not going to be rich. That answers what they think. Can I get rich in this? No. People work on jobs for 40 years. And, and, and don't get rich, yet and still they come into this business and they want to get rich in six months. It's not that kind of party. Right. You've got to work, you've got to build a foundation, you've got to learn the products, you've got to learn the marketplace, you've got to develop your personality, you've got to develop your people skills. It takes patience and perseverance and persistence to build this business, but ultimately, as they say, in the beginning you'll do a lot of things you don't get paid for, but as you continue to grow, you'll get paid for a lot of things that you don't do. Right. That's the exciting thing about multi-level marketing. It allows you to build something that you can call your own. A lot of people are wishing right now that they had Les Brown in their pocket. They could carry him around when they went and talked to their prospects and they could look him in the eye and tell him that. Um, talk about how these people can develop their story or, or, or let them know because I know yes. that there's a lot of people here and we have probably 50 different countries around the world that yes. watch this mm -hmm. and a lot of them aren't aware of you yet. Yes. Um, 
but the need to be, right? They need yes. to know about your products and services and coaching and all that stuff, and we'll talk about that. Um, your story, your, what, what was the defining moment, that turning point for you that set your life on a different course? Well, what set my life on a different course was when my mother became ill, mm. because I was a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio. I'm adopted. I was born in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. I'm telling you my story. And when we were six weeks of age, we were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. My mother was a domestic worker on Miami Beach. She, she cooked for families. We ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. We wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that Mama kept. And so as a child and goal, a turning point in my life was seeing my mother work so hard. I said, Eric, when I become a man, I want to take care of my mother. I want to ask you. Is there someone that you want to take care of? Is there someone that you'd like to do something special for? I want you to think about that person right now. Now, what I've done by doing that, I have segued from my story. I have now brought them into the story, and I asked them, is there someone you want to do something special for? They're saying yes. Now, that is called an imaginative leap. They leap from my story into their own story and say, yes, I know somebody. I like to do something for my coach or for my minister or for my mother or for my father or an aunt that raised me, okay? So now they're in the story. Mm -hmm. Now I will tell them how I went about doing that. So they have an interest. Who are you? What do you have? I have a story on how I brought my mother home and why should I care? The reason you should care is that I've been very successful at doing something that you can do too and I'm going to show you how to do it. So now you create a committed listening in the telling of the story. Or I can say, you know, uh, recently I went to a seminar, a young lady by the name of Pauline Ahi, she came to the seminar. Pauline flew from Hawaii to Los Angeles. I was very inspired as I watched her. And the reason I was inspired, here we were in a room of entrepreneurs, and the person standing in front of the room, Dr. Julie Van Putten, as she was speaking and talking about discovering your power voice, Ever so often, Pauline would lean forward, and she'd pick up a pen with her mouth, and she would write with her mouth. Pauline came from Hawaii. Pauline has no arms. Pauline has no legs. She writes with her mouth. Here's a person who decided to become an entrepreneur, who decided to build a business in multi-level marketing, and with no arms and no legs, she's building an organization, and one of the things that, that really got me when Dr. Julie Van Putten interviewed Pauline, she asked her, tell me one major obstacle you had in your life. Tell me something you can think of. And Pauline looked, and she thought, and she said, I can't think of anything. And that, that grabbed me, because I could have given her a whole lot of things, a list of obstacles. And that showed me that, that Elsie Robinson was right when he said, things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. Even though she was born with no arms and no legs, what has happened in her that she sees herself as an empowered person. She has not decided to become a part of a job, the journey of the broke. She decided to control her own destiny by being involved in multi-level marketing. And what I said as I looked at her, if Pauline can do it, I know I can do it. And I know you can do it. <laughs> so there's a story. How many more you got? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. So those examples, I mean, Mike Jones out yeah. of Philadelphia. I met him, Mike was earning uh, $500 a month on Social Security. He now earns over $35,000 a month, and he does a seminar called How to Earn Over $200,000 a Year with Your Eyes Closed. He's been blind since he was 10. <laughs> okay, so all of these examples of what we see other people's lives. We can use that as 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 a platform. So to whether it's your story or somebody else's somebody story, that's the example story. that you're giving. Yes, and people you can, say people say yeah, I don't have do success it. yet. Yes, you they're just getting it. started. I haven't had success. I've been involved for six months. I haven't had success. But I can tell this other story, and I can say that's why I'm doing this. Yeah, Dexter Yeager, who mm. was a beer truck driver, mm -hmm. and now 50 percent of Amway volume comes through his organization. Mm -hmm. Dexter was just an everyday guy who decided that he wanted to live a, li a different life for himself and for his family. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at people who are the great performers in multi-level marketing, here's what I know that they have in common too. Not only are they great storytellers, but there was a deciding moment, and that moment when they said virtually, I've had it. I've had it.
that, that, that's, that, that's when people change. I used to live next door to a lady named Lillian and Mr. Marvin. Every Friday night he would get drunk and beat her. And I saw her years later and said, how's Mr. Marvin doing? She said, I left him. I said, why? She said, I'd had it. I'd had it with Marvin beating on me. That's when people leave jobs and they say, well, where are you going? Away from here. I've had it. <laughs> you know, I was working on a job where they, 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 they paid me just enough to keep me from quitting it. I worked just hard enough to keep from getting fired. <laughs> so finally, I said, you know what? I've had it. Going where I'm celebrated rather than tolerated. I've had it living and playing small. Yeah. And so those kinds of examples and that kind of passion... People are not just looking for information. They're looking for personality and passion. They can get information on the Internet. Mm -hmm. There are no secrets out here. You can just Google everything and find out what day the earth, the earth was made in the dog, and the rock that broke Goliath's jaw. We can find everything right now. But personality and passion, that's what people want. That's what they buy into. Do you believe this? The difference between being in this business and this business being in you. That's what they feel. And the people that, that grow the large organizations, you can tell being in their presence that as much as they have chosen this, they were chosen for this kind of work. You've got to have a passion for people. You've got to believe in the product. You've got to believe in the industry. You've got to believe that you have it within yourself to become an entrepreneur, that it's possible that you can live your dream. That's why people say yes, that it's necessary, and that you are the driving force to make it happen, that it's you, that nobody can do it for you, nobody's going to care more about your dream than you, and that it's hard, that easy is not an option, that when you think about growing your organization, think it not strange that your family, family members and friends will say no, people who should be there to help you won't help you, in fact, they will discourage you, they will laugh at you. Oh, you're involved in some pyramid scheme. Here you go again. All of that's going to be a part of it. When you get on an airplane before they take off, they say, fasten your seatbelt. Why? Because you're going to experience some turbulence before you reach a comfortable altitude. When you get involved in multi-level marketing, fasten your psychological seatbelts. Why? Because you're going to experience rejections and no and laughter and snickers from your family members and friends. Why? I don't know. That's just the way it is. It's possible you can live your dreams in spite of that. It's necessary for you to know that you're the one to make it happen and that you become selective of people that you bring into the business. You don't want to convince people to do it because person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. You want people who want more, not people who need more. And that it's you. You've got to be the driving force and it's hard and it's worth it. Decide now. Write down five reasons on why you won't give up. Five reasons when you're facing the rejections and the no's, when people don't show up at the parties, when people don't keep their word. Five reasons why you will stick in the game. I have a saying when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Your reasons will help you get back up again. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. So it's possible you can build an incredible organization, make a great living for yourself. And it's necessary. You, If you're casual about your dream, as Bill Bailey said, you will end up a casualty. And it's you, and it's hard, and it's worth it. And once you create that momentum, it's done. Stick a fork in it. It's done. <laughs> so it's possible. Yes. The second one? Yes, and the reason it's possible, What's possible for one is possible for all. If yeah. anybody built an incredible organization, went across the stage, and, and got a check because of their work and their effort, then it's possible that everybody seated there as witnesses can do it. Right. And that it's necessary. It's that necessary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to have a game plan. You've got to be willing to stick it out. You've got to be willing to persist. Uh, Art Mandino said you've got to be willing to say, I will persist until I succeed. And, you know, the greatest salesman in the world. And, and you've got to say to yourself, your mantra, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Because in the beginning, things look real good. Right. And then you have a dry spell. And right. then you start questioning yourself. And that's what over 85 percent of people do and it's you you got to take yeah. personal responsibility you're going from being a volunteer victim of letting somebody tell you what time to be to work how long your lunch break will be what time to get off how many days you can be sick out of the year how many days you can go on vacation got to ask for permission you're going from that position of powerlessness and 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 and, and being weak because most people have developed an addiction to powerlessness that's why the majority of people you ask to come into this business will say no they have developed an addiction to powerlessness. When you work in somebody else's job, they are controlling your financial future. So you are different.
different. You are not common. You are uncommon when you so said yes stop, to this dream. Yeah, stop for a second. An addiction to powerlessness. Yes. I, I've never heard it said that way. And I think yeah. that's really interesting the way you say that. Because we have, we've have we been taught. We've been, we've been groomed and, and, groomed, and been yeah. taught to depend on a job, to look forward to a job. People looking for jobs in an economy where jobs are shrinking. We cannot produce enough, enough jobs. The government cannot produce enough jobs to replace the jobs that are being eliminated through technology and cheap labor abroad. I can get a PhD in the Philippines for five hundred dollars a month. When I was a kid, I used to work in a bowling alley. They knocked the pins down. We jumped down and we straightened the pins back up. Somebody invented a tray that put us out of business. I used to work on the elevator. What floor, please? And I would punch the elevator. No, no, they don't need that now. When I was in school, my girlfriend said, I want to be an operator. When you made a long distance call, you called an operator, an operator place to call. Now you call direct. So technology is changing things, replacing whole industries. When the last time you went to the store and bought some envelopes and a stamp and some stationery and a pen to write a letter? We don't do that now. Right. We text, we email. That's an industry that's eroding. I went to a school, Bill Gates School in Philadelphia. They don't have paper, all computer, a paperless school. That's different. When I was a kid, we carried books to school. Mm -hmm. So this is the era the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. What we have in multi-level marketing is cooperation and collaboration, people working together in a community of achievers to help everybody win. Mm -hmm. That's the exciting thing, that, that, that when I help you win, then I win also. So back to story. Do you, so do you think story helps people realize that they have an addiction to helplessness? And, Absolutely. You and, have to you, and you. build a bridge to get them away from that Absolutely. posture? Absolutely. That's the purpose of the story because what the story does is distract, dispute, and inspire. Mm. What you do, how people live their lives is a result of the story they believe about themselves. If there are 500 people in an audience, there are 500 individual stories that's going on. So that's why it's important that we learn how to strategically create an experience with our story so those 500 people will stop listening to their story. Through the course of your telling the story, they will back away from the possibility of blindness and say, I can't sell or I can't do this or I'm not ready to learn something different and new and change the page in my life. You cause them to back away from the possibility of blindness and inspire them to become, as Mother Teresa would say, to become a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives because you've distracted them from their story and you've used the example of a Pauline Arhi or a Mike Jones or a Dexter Yeager to help them say, whoa, if he can do it, I can do it because what's possible for one is possible for all. And now they're ready to start a new chapter with their lives. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a fan? I mean, I've been sitting here all day and we could just talk because, yeah. I mean, the way you talk is so, the average person wants to give facts. They want so much to, you know, to prove to somebody else that they know something. So they're given facts and information. And through your stories and through the quotes that provide third-party validation yes. that, that lets them know it's not just your opinion, it's other smart people have have had the same opinion in the past. Yes. You know, it's it's so masterfully done, and I hope you're getting a lot of tips here, and I hope as you, as we're done with this interview, we're not done now, but when we're done with it, then you start to practice your story. That's and you key. start to, you know, tell your story to your dog, and tell your story right. to your and kids. get some coaching, because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You have to, you know, this last round that you now see, I didn't know he existed. I, mean, I used to be a different person, but a guy named Mike Williams, he interrupted a story in my head. He said, Les, you can do more than be a disc jockey. What do you mean? I'm LB, Triple P, Les Brown, you plan to play in buffer. There were none before me, there will be none after me, therefore that makes me the one and only. Young and single, love to make a certified, butterfly, doably qualified to bring you satisfaction, a whole lot of action. I had to kill them all. Bam, bam, bam! He said, Les, you can do more than be the MC at the Bottoms Up Club and the Pink Pussycat in the Jamaica Club. You can talk to corporations and organizations. I said, what would I talk to them about? I don't have any college training. He said, Les, all of us are born the same way, dumb, naked, and speechless. You can learn. Mm. Okay, and so because of how he communicated with me, he created a thirst. One of the things I say to people, particularly when you come into this business, if someone has recruited you into this business, they saw something in you. And one of the things I strongly believe in why Mike is still my mentor to this day, Mike Williams, 
And that is that sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. So whoever invited you into this business, they saw something in you. And if you don't see it, it doesn't matter that you don't see it because eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you if you say yes to your dream and yes to the opportunity that the multi-level marketing industry can afford you. Can afford you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. Um, I saw an interview with Will Smith a little while ago, and he said, greatness is simple. Here's what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Yes. Jeff, when you talk about desire, you talk about hunger, you talk about yeah, determination. You, if you, are you willing it to, to lose it all to gain it all? Uh, you just know, willing you, to just go out there and make it happen. I, I believe that, that since greatness is possible, then being excellent is not enough. Right that anybody through observation and practice can perform at the level of excellence. But when you see a Larry Bird who formerly played for the Boston Celtics, you don't say, boy, when the Bird played, he was an excellent player. We're talking about greatness here. Right. You see a Wayne Gretzky. And I believe that, that, that when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what the limits are. Mm. So you act like you don't have any. Mm. That you become intelligently ignorant. According to the laws of aerodynamics, as we know, a bumblebee isn't supposed to fly because his body is too large to be held up by the little puny, puny wings. But the bumblebee doesn't know it. And what you will find in multi-level marketing, that you'll see people take quantum leaps in terms of their yeah. influence and their income. Why? Because being in a community of achievers, you discover some powers and abilities you have that you don't even realize that um, L.C. Robinson was right, that things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that, happen, that really count are the things that happen in you. And part of being around other achievement-driven people, they'll push you to levels that you can never go by yourself. And that's, that's why it's so very important that we do something that Jim Rohn said, and that is look at your relationships and you're building your organization. You want to develop greatness. The only way you can develop your greatness is you've got to be in a relationship with people that will push you, that will stretch you, that hold you to a higher standard, that will hold you accountable. And, and, and you have to look at your relationship, and Jim said, Ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? Right. Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Is it challenging me? Am I honoring my word as myself? Um, is this making me begin to look at myself and reflect on myself and raise the bar on myself? Einstein said the thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems this thinking can't solve. And, and part of developing your greatness is, is being around people who, as you run, you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck, but they will challenge you to step it up to another level. Right. Well, as as we're, we're running out of time, but we could talk all day, yes. and we could tell some stories, and we could yes. do some stuff, but that'll be for another time. But um, first of all, I'm going to put a link so people can, can find a way to contact you, mm -hmm. find out about your products, your services, your coaching yes. that you do on how to tell stories. So everybody, I encourage you to connect, and this will be seen by over 100,000 people oh, yeah. all over the world. People are really Is hungry. Right? Part of what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to train 1,000 voices of hope. Hmm. We have produced a generation of problem staters. Hmm. I want to produce 1,000 voices of hope. How people live their lives, as I said, is a result of the story they believe about themselves. Whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And I think that politicians and many of our leaders have become so cynical and divisive in their languaging style and only pointing out what's wrong as opposed to looking at what's right about ourselves, about our communities, our country, and our youth, and, and, and begin to focus on the positive things and the possibilities and, and how we can transform the future and talk about solutions because if you're not a part of the, the, the solution, you're part of the problem. And right. so with these one voice, 1,000 voices of hope, my goal is to reduce the recidivism rate in our prisons, to um, the reduce the dropout rate. I, I work with young people, teaching them, number one, how to develop their minds, two, how to become effective communicators. You know, my son, John Leslie, my daughter, owner, they're, they're motivational speakers. Uh, three, how to dress like a prospect rather than a suspect. <laughs> and four, the success strategies for making it a global economy, which is multi-level marketing. And, and so I believe with these 1,000 voices of hope, as I teach them to become world-class communicators, they'll be able to change the planet and how people see themselves. Well, please.
please check that out. And I hope that the 1,000, most yeah. of them come from the Network Marketing Pro community. Um, a lot of people, we talk about there's three things that you need to succeed in network marketing. You have to have a burning desire, you have to be willing to work, and you have to be coachable. Yes. Um, and we talked about this in previous shows, and a lot of people were coming, to, I just don't know how to find my burning desire. I don't know how to figure out, you know, I can't light the fire. Help me light the fire. <laughs> um, what, you would, to, what would you say to that? You that have group? to experiment until you do. I mean, some people know early on. Uh, when I think about... Uh, you look at some of the, the people that we recognize for their, their greatness today. When you look at a Michael Jordan, who realized early on that basketball was his passion. A Liberace, when he was alive, he loved to play the piano, and he was very flashy, a flamboyant kind of guy. That you have to experiment with life. Life is about experimenting. The two most important moments in our lives is the day that we are born and the day that we realize why we were. Yeah. That we were chosen for something. And so you have to experiment until you find it. And, and I will tell you, a lot of people get the misinterpretation that network marketing has to be their passion. Network marketing can be their passion. It's my passion. But for most people, it's a tool to it's be able tool, right? to buy the house for your mom. It's the yeah. tool to be able to contribute is, to the yeah, world. To me, network marketing is a vehicle hmm. that allows you to develop the total you. Hmm. There is no other, you cannot, when you're working on a job and you go in knowing what it is you have to do, knowing that if you are breaking your back and breaking a sweat, working every day, and the person next to you dragging their feet, you're still getting the same pay. Mm. The difference between that and network marketing, you have to develop your entrepreneurial skills, you have to learn to keep good records, you have to learn to manage yourself, you have to learn to manage your time, you have to learn to manage people, how to influence people, you have to learn how to plan, have an agenda for your life, because you know if you don't have an agenda for your life, you're part of somebody else's agenda. So it develops every dimension of who you are, honest to God, Eric, it had it not been for best line products that I first heard Jim Rowan and under the leadership of Bill Bailey yeah. years ago during the days of Holiday Magic and, and Dare to be Great with Glenn Turner, I wouldn't be who I am. All of those experiences, those conventions, those positive, motivated people, people who had dreams, people who had dreams, man. The question was asked, when does a man or a woman die? And I said, they die when their dreams die. Mm. You know, when you don't have anything to, to, to look forward to. Kenny Rogers said, having someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to will give you a long, fulfilling life. And so it, it, it helps you to develop every dimension of yourself. And that, to me, is the passion. The passion to, to live full and to die empty. The passion to find out what it is you've made of. The passion to get up the next day after facing rejection, day in and day out, walking in the grocery store, going in the shopping mall, talking to people in the cleaners about an opportunity, and they say, no, I'm not interested, and continue to go from rejection and no's and snickers and laughter until you find that yes, until you find that eagle. And you're going to go through a lot of pigeons before you find them. And you build your character. You build your faith. And one day you look in the mirror and there's a different man looking back at you. There's a different woman looking back at you. There's a saying this, that I refuse to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the still calm of utopia. I will never cow before any master nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. That's what it means to be a multi-level marketer, an uncommon desire to control your destiny. I'm getting fired up. I'm getting excited. <laughs> My medication man. <laughs> I will tell you, we're out of time, and, I've, and we'll do this again, but I... Uh, a long time ago, you looked my son in the eye, mm -hmm. backstage before an yes, event, and he grabbed him by the side of his face, yes. and he said, you know what, you've got greatness in you. And yes. you know what, for everybody that's watching, his message that I hope you feel is that you've got greatness inside of you. You've got things, talents and skills that you haven't even reached for yet. Yes. Uh, you've got abilities and, and, and stories that are going to yes. be amazing. And can change the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen... 
here from Dallas, Texas, my wish for all of you is that you decide to find your passion, that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you develop your skills, you learn to tell stories, that you get the coaching and training and information that you need to be able to take it all the way to the top. Because you know what? You really do have greatness in you. It is a stone cold fact. You got something else to say? Say yes. It. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy and Eric Warrior's pride and joy. <laughs> It's a fact, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.